Welcome back everybody. This is Eric and Barry uh, from Moss Pawn and Gun and uh, today we have another gun gripe video for you and uh, today we're going to be talking, this is actually kind of a good thing Barry, uh, right. we're going to be talking a little bit about the uh, assault weapons ban that you know now as, as the news has reported and as things have been reported does not stand a single chance of uh, being voted on at this time. Right. Uh, as legislation, as standalone legislation, the gun ban is pretty much per batum, dead in the water. Uh, now it can still be introduced as a amendment of some sort and uh, there probably will be attempts to kind of sweep it under the rug with something else. Now they might try to sweep it under the rug in something like Obamacare or something related to Obamacare or they might try to sweep it uh, under the rug in some kind of transportation bill uh, just because this initial attempt has been completely shot down and shut down, we cannot, you know, relax we, we, we can't stuff. relax. I mean, okay. we've got to be careful, and we still got to be vigilant, Barry. And we've still got the third thing they they haven't voted on yet is the uh, universal background check. Now, something could be squeezed in on that. The gun gripe about this to me is the fact that people panic because of the bill, the Bill Clinton crime bill. A lot of people were convinced this thing was going to pass. So they go out and spend three times what they should have for one of these. I would be pissed. I would really be pissed if I paid $2,500 for a $1,000 AR. But it's a modern sporting rifle. You know, it's not an assault rifle. It's not an evil black rifle. It's not a baby killer. It's not this or that. All they are is a modern sporting rifle. Now there's people out there that argue, well, do you need a 30 round magazine? Do you need a 100 round drum? You know, it's not really a matter of need. I mean, the problem with banning guns, magazines, things like that because of their features or because of their cosmetic looks, the problem with that is that you're attempting to regulate morality and you're punishing people for doing something that they haven't even done yet or won't do at all. Right. You, know, you can't say just because somebody could carry a hundred round drum and a gun and go gun down a bunch of people, you can't punish someone for something that they may or may not do. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're innocent until proven guilty. Well, if, if they outlaw high cap magazines, then you just go the Boondock Saints route and you carry ten handguns on them. I right. mean, you can always up your firepower if that's the thing you have to do. Just because you limit a gun to uh, ten rounds or in New York seven rounds, that doesn't mean a guy can't carry ten of them. Right, and, and it doesn't mean that someone is not so damn proficient behind a gun that they can't swap mags in a fly and it don't matter anyway. Right, if you could, uh, you know, they're trying to keep you from drinking over, what is a 16 ounce drink in New York, well, how, why don't I just order two of them? Right. I mean, what is, the, what is the whole point of all this spending the taxpayers' money passing laws that they know they can't enforce, and it's useless. It's That's totally right. useless. It's really just a waste of tax dollars, it's a waste of, uh, of resources, it's a waste of the government uh, officials' time, which, you know, there's a lot of people that would argue that we need smaller government, and yes, we do. We need smaller government, we need less government, and we need the right kind of government. Mm -hmm. And that can only come from the ballot box. You know, remember those people, that these Democrats are not voting on, you know, they don't want to touch these gun bills with a 10-foot pole. And that's why Feinstein's initial attempt was shut down so quickly, because they know, you know, they're basically saying, Oh, no way. Slide that off the table. We don't even right. want to consider voting on this, much less even accept it for us to even talk about it. Because mm -hmm. they know that if they go on the record and they have to side with their constituents, which a lot of them would have to, mm -hmm. they know that they would have to take the route on gun control that is political suicide. They know this. Mm -hmm. And that is the only reason that particular amount of legislation was not brought uh, to be voted on. Because right. you know, even the Democrats know better. And the, the two main political parties in this country, Republicans and Democrats, both of them are being watered down right now. The Democrats aren't the strong Democrats anymore. Like Eric said, they're committing political suicide if they go and vote against the people. Uh, and the Republicans, they're so watered down. I'm a man without a party right now. I don't have a party. I don't have Democrat or Republican because I don't, I don't like either one of them. Yeah, I mean, and I think the days of like a traditional two-party system is, is really over because I think that, you know, politicians should be judged on what they do. And, I mean, what they say they're going to do, maybe, but, you know, they should be judged on what they do. Mm -hmm. And their track record. I mean, if a politician has a track record of being anti-gun, of not supporting the things that you don't support, then don't vote for them. Right. But on one end of the, you know, I'm kind of torn because on the other end of the scheme, you've got the fact that these people, they are voted in. 
nothing changes that fact. I mean, these people were democratically elected in, like, you know, in a democracy, that's how it works. You vote people in, you vote what you want, you vote what you don't want, and the fact that these people keep getting voted in tells us that the populace really is, I mean, either that dumb or that brainwashed. Well, they're, in not, my mind. they're not that dumb. The fact of the matter is people are so discouraged with the political system that people don't even bother to vote. And that is the that is the cornerstone of this whole civilized world that we live in is the, the, the vote. If you don't vote, you can't bitch. If you don't vote, don't complain. You, know, you, you take the government that they shove down your throat. That's right. Well, you, you know, you, you get the government that you ask for. And that's if right. you don't ask for it, if you don't try to change it, if you don't vote, then it won't ever change. And I think a lot, in this last election, a lot of Republicans kind of sat on the sideline and said, ah, we won't vote. Ah, it'll sort itself out. You know, oh, we won't bother. Or, you know, oh, I, I work my butt off and I can't take off work. You know, I don't want to do it. You know, but yet on the other end, you got the left end, the left side of the spectrum is, you know, sending buses over to the ghetto to pick everybody up and give them coffee and donuts and take, send them over to vote twice right. or stuff like that. I right. mean, there's a lot of voter fraud that was proved, that's been kind of introduced. People have talked about finding voter fraud in some of these swing states. Mm -hmm. It's just fishy. Uh, well, anyway, getting back to the high cap mag ban, you know, I had always predicted that maybe they wouldn't get the guns, but they would get the ban. And this is not over yet. This is this is not over yet. It's it's not it's not a, a cold fish yet. They can put this through on an amendment or whatever you need to do. But anyway, while we're talking on the subject of high cap mags, we just got in these uh, Korean magazines for the Glock Model 21. These are 26 shot mags. They fit the gun very well. Very well engineered uh, magazine here. Um, we've got the uh, Korean 50 shot magazine for the Glock. Nine millimeter. We had one of our subscribers take this out. He loaded one twice, 100 rounds. He said it fired flawlessly. How long the magazine will function flawlessly, that's up for grabs. Right. But there again, like Eric was showing you, we've got the Keltec rifle with the 100 uh, the round beta mag made for the Glock. That'll go right into this gun. And you got 100 rounds in your Glock, mm -hmm. beta mag. They're very expensive. Oh, yeah. And would be incredibly heavy once loaded, but they, uh, the magazines are out there, and we're seeing things in the last couple of weeks, things are really freeing up. We're getting high cap magazines again. Today we got in a large shipment of 22 long rifle ammunition, which we haven't had for months. Yeah. It's starting to free up now. And, things uh, are starting to free up, people, so don't right. worry. I mean, I think that the political stratum in this country, like Barry said, is far from over. Uh, this battle is far from over. We have to remain vigilant uh, when it comes to our rights and to gun rights in general, I mean, that's very important. Uh, you know, we also have to consider that this is going to clear up people. It's going to get better. You know, we do have products starting to come back in. You know, we got, you know, a few ARs trickling in, Glocks. You know, as you see, we got a kel Sub-2000. These are very hard to get, but they are trickling in. Um, ammo's trickling back in. Magazines are trickling back in. So um, I think my prediction, all right, for the next three or four months, I think that four months from now, this is all just going to seem like a bad nightmare and it'll be over. That's my prediction. Now, Barry seems to think otherwise. What well, do you think? The thing that separates this from the Bill Clinton ban was that uh, during the Bill Clinton ban, everybody panicked that had a gun and they bought more guns and more ammunition. We're seeing with this scare, people who never would have owned a gun in their life are coming in here buying two and three guns and all the ammunition they can afford. You do not want to be the only person on your block without a gun. I guarantee you don't want to do that. And whether or not uh, this gun ban blows over whatever, you have to remember the world and society is teetering right now. Now this country is in bad, bad economic shape. Uh, Europe is at war. Uh, Israel is at war. President Obama went over there talking about peace as possible. Well. How are you going to make those people love each other? How? Thousands of years have passed and they, have, they don't love each other yet. There's always going to be wars, there's always going to be famine, there's always going to be pestilence and all these things that, that plague mankind. And this is still the best country in the world to live in. I'm convinced of that. With all our problems here, we're still the best country. I think the best thing to do also is to, you know, we need to heed people like Washington's advice. You know, George Washington said to avoid alliances with the outside world. Now, he didn't mean you couldn't trade with them. He didn't mean you couldn't have business with them. What he meant is stay out of their 
political affairs. Well, you stay sovereign. You stay sovereign. And that, you know, I think that that's the best policy is to be sovereign. Now, there's a lot of people that argue in terms of foreign policy. They may say, okay, well, you can't be lax on foreign policy because if you allow them to uh, conspire or transpire against you, then, of course, they're going to, uh, you know, come up with some way to get you. But, I mean, can you imagine a nation attacking us? Oh, it would be something, wouldn't it? It'd be something. Yeah. But that'll never happen on the ground. Now, uh, we've got we've got these crazy countries that are building nuclear weaponry right now, and, uh, of course, we're trying to negotiate with them to keep that under control. But how are you going to stop them? We've been trying to fight these countries having nuclear weapons for decades, and they're still experimenting with them. They're still test-firing nuclear weapons. That's right. Um, when you have a country that is military is the core value of that country. In North Korea, they have parades with tanks and rockets and people cheering. and it's, it's, They celebrate this type of a thing. They do. Which we don't. So, you know, we, we, I, I try to think that I'm a nonviolent person. And I, you know, well, and a lot, of us, a lot of us do, but, you know, we are a gun culture. That's right. I think that the American citizenry and, and what, what these types of, uh, you know, downsizing type of legislation proves, you know, like this legislation basically being thrown out, what it proves is that, you know, Americans want their mm -hmm. guns. I mean, with a sh beyond a shadow of a doubt, Americans want their guns. Right. And, and they're just not going to accept anything less. I mean... And, and see, the thing is, it's not about what someone can do or what someone should do or what they could do. The thing is, anything that takes any amount of power away from a person is not going to be a popular idea, no matter how you cut it. If you take guns from someone, you are taking, in essence, power. You don't have to be strong if you own guns. Right. People have to negotiate with you. Right. And see, it's one of those things that you take that power away from the citizenry, and there's no negotiation. It's just you do what we say because we got the ARs, we got all the guns, and what do you got? Sharp stick? When uh, all this started, they were testing the water to see what the American people would do. A uh, a thousand percent increase in gun sales, I think, sent a message somewhere. That's right. These politicians are running scared now. You got Diane Feinstein, she doesn't care. She's not running scared, but the other, like Eric said, these guys are, and women are committing political suicide if they don't do what the American people, the majority of American people want guns. Well, now, I don't care what the statistics say. We know that the majority of people want guns, and they want the right to own a gun. And regardless of their the way they vote, they want guns. Now, you've got right. people that might have, you know, they might have known that they voted for anti-gun politicians, but it doesn't mean they don't want a gun. Right. You know, there was a lady who was in here the other day. It actually kind of pissed me off. I didn't say anything to her, but there was a lady who came in and was like, I got my pistol and my rifle, but I dang sure think they need to take them away from all these people. Yeah. She's like, yeah. I got mine, though. I ain't worried about right. it. And right. it's like, how can someone say that? I mean, what about the next generation of people? What about people that, you know, what about the 17-year-old that's about to turn 18, and he's about to exercise his right to own a gun? Mm -hmm. You're saying that person can't own a gun? I mean, you're actually going to go as far as to say that screw everyone else just because I'm taken care of? I mean, wh what a screwed up you know, way of looking at things. Here's a gun gripe all its own. I, my pistol permit expired. I, I, we were too busy at the shop for me to take a day off and get, now I've got to go and pay $79 mm -hmm. to exercise my Second Amendment right. Yep. That is, that's preposterous. And then if you fill out a form 4473, you get delayed. I, oh yeah, I bought a gun the other day and got delayed on a gun sale. Yep. And I've had a gun permit for 36 years. I have carried a gun with a permit and they delayed me for two business days. There's no excuse for that, folks. There's no excuse for that whatsoever. Yep. Now, I've been delayed once. Yeah. I got delayed once. My, uh, same thing as Barry. Uh, my carry permit lapsed, and I had a little bit of lapse in coverage. Of course, I went and got it again. Mm -hmm. But um, you know, I went and bought a rifle, and of all things, it was like a uh, you know hundred year old military rifle. You know me, I buy old stuff, and you know here I am in the gun store being delayed mm -hmm. on a hundred year old rifle. But there's only one I mean, reason, and one reason only. Why you have to uh, pay money to exercise your right is revenue. It's revenue for the county and the city and whatever. It's revenue. It's not about my right. It's not about right or wrong. It's about revenue. That's, now, right. that's all it is. There's no reason why a law-abiding citizen can't go buy a gun and carry that gun as long as they don't screw up with it. Well, you know, I think that we need to, you know, and we're going we're gonna to go ahead and cut this short because I know we've, we've been going on for a minute here, but uh, basically we'll end by saying that you know, people should be judged by their actions and not by what they could or could not do. Right. Now, 
the thing is with this legislation, okay, yeah, for now, it's dead in the water. But we have to remain vigilant. We have to keep an eye out. We have to make sure that none of this is going to occur again. We have to keep an eye on these people because they will try to sweep it in under the rug. And one of the things that concerns me is how they're wanting to have comprehensive background checks, uh, mandatory comprehensive background checks, basically no transfer of firearms to civilians. Right. Well, the only, or from civilian to civilian, civilian, to civilian. the only thing that that's going to do is just going to be backdoor gun registration. Mm -hmm. Because how do you know who's transferring what unless you know what every gun is and where it is, mm -hmm. who's got it, and the only way to even enforce that is to register guns. So see, registration is the first step to confiscation. Mm -hmm. And confiscation is the first step to them having complete control over the citizenry in every way. I mean, we're talking $30 for a gallon of milk and $30 for a loaf of bread. They can do what they want at that point because there's nobody to resist them. Well, so, look at this way. You want to sell your neighbor your deer rifle. Right. Under this new rule, you would have to come to an FFL dealer like us. You would have to fill out a 4473, the, the person buying it, you're transferring it to, would have to fill out a 4473 and pay us a fee. Right. Now, how many people are really going to do that? Your neighbor, you've known them for 35 years. You know they're not setting you up. Right. You just sell it to them and give them the money. Who's going to take off from work and go go through all that stuff? I mean, it is the law. And I'm right. not telling you to break the law, but what I'm saying is how many people would actually do that? Well, and here's my concern also, Barry, is that you know not only do you have that stipulation that just makes it incredibly inconvenient uh, to, to for people to sell and buy and trade in guns, of course, that's what it comes down to is just making it inconvenient and undesirable to exercise your right, okay? But also what concerns me too is, you know, they're talking about wanting to try to, um, you know, work within, you know, the medical community. They want to be able to access people's medical records with right. those background checks. Right. And so that's what they're going to do. They're going to sweep it in under Obamacare and say, oh, well, since we have, you know, socialized health care now, well then, you know, we have to make sure that each person under this health care is not a menace to society or a danger right. to society and the part of the way they're going to do that is they're going to say okay Joe Blow when you buy a gun they're going to ask you know a lot more questions mm -hmm. and then they'll have some sort of medical history check that goes along with your background check mm -hmm. and whatever you know they'll have a set of rules that'll ding you I mean what if you're a veteran with post-traumatic stress syndrome right or even if it's minor I mean if, if that counts as a mental health I mean so you can go overseas and you can get shot at for years on end and you and you can risk your life but then come home and be disarmed over a, a stipulation right or you know what about somebody that has a a mental health issue that is, is does not make them violent i mean just to say okay well mental health disorder in general pow right there you're dinged and that's it mm -hmm. i think that's a little unconstitutional well i mean not to mention that someone's medical history is their own business that's not the public's business. No, it isn't. Uh, mm -hmm. It's not the government's business. No, it's not. Uh, a, 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 a doctor patient relationship is confidential. Right. It's supposed to be. But uh, anyway, we've rambled on long enough, and uh, I hope that y'all are, uh, got, you know, there's hope for the country yet. Let me put it to you that way. They voted this stuff down. The American people have got their guns, and they're, they're going to stick to their guns. And I hope you stick to your guns too. Absolutely. So. And don't worry, people. I mean, it's going to get better. But remember, we got to, you know, we got to remain vigilant. You know, we've won this small victory, but you know, it, they're not going to stop. No. So don't give them a reason, and let, let's just keep keep our eyes on them, and that's right. the best we can do. Right. So y'all have a good evening, and uh, we'll have another gun right for you next week. Y'all have a good one. Y'all have a good one, folks.